Hi, and welcome to lesson 12.1 on probability. And we're gonna answer the essential question, how do you describe the likelihood of an event? Finding the likelihood of an event. Each time you roll a number cube, and this is a number cube, a number from one to six lands face up, and this is called an event. Work with a partner, but you're just gonna watch me do it. How many of the six possible results of rolling a number cube match the described event? Then order the events from least likely, which is one, to most likely, which is nine, by writing a number in each box to the right. So rolling a number less than seven. Well, what could happen? Uh, well, we can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So six out of the six possible rolls uh, would happen there. Rolling an eight. Well, zero of the six. There are no eights when you have a number cube like this. How about rolling a number greater than four? Well, we have just the numbers five and six. See, it goes up as high as six here. So uh, just the numbers five and six. So we only have two of the possible outcomes that can happen there. Rolling a five. Well, there's only one five, so it's one out of six. And we have rolling a number other than six. Well, we have the numbers one, two, three, four, five. And we have five of six possible events that can happen. Rolling an even number, there's two, four, and six. There's three of six possible events. Rolling a number less than five, one, two, three, and four. Those are all less than five. That's four of the six possible events. Rolling an odd number, similar to rolling it even, only it's one, three, and five. It's three out of six. And rolling a number between, uh, a number divisible by three. The only two numbers divisible by three are three and six. And so there's only two of the possible events. And so as I look at this, six out of the six, well, that is the most likely. So nine has the most likely, so that's most likely gonna happen. Uh, rolling an eight, that's least likely to happen. And, and I'm really just looking at these uh, six and the zero and the two. The highest number is gonna get the highest likelihood. And the lowest number is gonna get the lowest likelihood. So five and six, there's two out of the six possible. And this one has two out of six possible. So these are tied for three and four. Five, well, there's one that's possible. So that's gonna be the second one because that's zero. That's our number one. So let's see. Five out of six possible. That's, that's just shy of the six out of six possible that's here. So that's gonna be our eight position. Two, four, six. That's just like the one, three, five. Those are tied right there. So they're tied for five and six. And four out of six, that's not quite as good as five out of six. So that's why it's in the seven position. Are there any, event, any events that are impossible? Rolling an eight's impossible because there's no eight on the number cube. Again, it goes as high as six. Oh, that looks like nine, doesn't it? But it's actually six. Okay. So we have that, and we move on to this page here. Describing events. An event is an activity involving chance in which results are observed. Each observation of an event is an experiment, uh, of an experiment is called a trial, and each result of it is an outcome. A set of one more outcomes is an event. So we're going to put all these words to work in this example below. The probability of an event, written P of the event, measures the likelihood that an event will occur. Probability is a measure between 0 and 1, as shown on the number line. So here's that number line. Impossible, and it's certain. You can't avoid it. If the event is not likely to occur, the probability is close to zero. If the event is likely to occur, it's closer to one. And now we have example one. In example one, we're asked to tell whether each event is impossible, unlikely, as likely as not, likely, or certain. Wow, we have a lot of options there. Then tell whether the probability is zero, close to zero, one half, close to one, or one. You roll a six on a number cube, and the number is one or greater. So we roll a six on so we roll a six on the number cube, okay, and the number is one or greater. So because you can roll one, two, three, four, five, and six on a number cube, there are six possible 
outcomes. Remember what an outcome is. Uh, this event is certain to happen. Its probability is one. That is quite certain that we are going to get uh, uh, a number greater than one, uh, a one or greater. Uh, you, the next one uh, is uh, you roll two number cubes and the sum of the numbers is three. So I roll two of them now. The sum of that is 11. The sum of this is uh, six and so on. So we're looking at the sum of the number cubes is three. It's unlikely to happen, probably close to zero. And I'd like to show you how and why. And so what I have is this. I've I wrote all of the different combinations. You can roll a one and a one. So I'll just show you. You can get a one and a one, and their sum is two. You can get a one and a two, and there is a sum of three, so I box that. And then I wrote all the others. You can get a two and then a one, and that sum is three, which I guess you might argue is the same thing. But I wrote down, I was systematic about, about all these. So you can get a total of, uh, what, six times six, 36 different sums here by rolling the two. But only two of the 36 will actually show up to have a sum of three. So that's why it's unlikely. <laughs> I mean, so many different other things that could be there. So here, um, yeah, it's close to zero. A bowl contains discs marked numbers one through 10. You close your eyes and select a disc at random. You pick an odd number. Well, there's how many odd numbers? There's five odd numbers out of 10 discs. There's uh, one half right there because that simplifies to one half. And a spinner has eight equal sections marked zero through seven. You spin and land on a prime number. Ooh, you gotta prime, remember what a prime number is. It only has um, two factors, one in itself. I'll write down, um, let's see, uh, zero through seven. So I'll write that here. Um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Prime numbers, uh, zeros not prime, one's not prime, two is our first prime number because it only has two factors, one in itself, three is also prime, four has factors one and two and four, five is prime, six is not prime, and seven is prime. So how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four. We have four prime numbers out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four out of eight looks like a half to me, and that is what we got. Let's reflect. The probability of event A is one-third. The probability of event B is one-fourth. What can, can you conclude about the two events? Uh, well, from this, I would say that neither is very likely. One-third and one-fourth, not so good. But event A is more likely to happen because one-third is bigger than one-fourth. Okay. So, we have a your turn question. And uh, it says, a hat contains pieces of paper marked with the numbers 1 through 16. Tell whether picking an even number is impossible, unlikely, as likely as not, likely or certain. Tell whether the probability is 0, close to 0, 1 half, or close to, okay, blah, blah, blah. So what is the probability of getting an even number? We have even numbers. Uh, 0 is not, oh, so it's 1 through 16. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 out of the 16, and that is equal to 1 half. So that's, we call that as likely as not, it's right in the middle, 1 half. Now finding probability, we have a sample space, that's a set of all possible outcomes from an experiment. And if you remember what an experiment is, it is, I have it right an experiment is uh, an activity involving chance. So you're doing something, okay? And it involves chance. So a sample space can be small, such as the two outcomes when a coin is flipped. Or a sample space can be large, like, such as the number of Texas classic automobile license plates. That's very big. Identifying sample space can help you calculate the probability of an event. 
So the P of an event, the probability of an event is the number of outcomes in that event that you're looking for at the total number of outcomes in your sample space. Here's our example. What's the probability of rolling an even number on a standard number cube? Okay, so you find the sample space. That's all the things that could happen on a number cube. And so we can get the numbers one through six. Uh, how many even numbers? There's two, four, and six. So we have, there's three out of the six possible. So there's your three out of six, which simplifies to one half. So probability of rolling even numbers, one half. Okay. So now we go on to a couple of your turn questions. Find the probability, write your answer in simplest form. Picking a purple marble from a jar of 10 green and 10 purple. Well, all together, our sample space is 20 because 10 plus 10 is 20. And we're looking for the purple, so there's 10 out of 20, which simplifies, because they want it in simplest form, is one half. Rolling a number greater than four on a standard number cube. Well, if you look at the number cube, greater than four, you have the options of five and six. So that's only two out of the six. So two, uh, what, what would we call it? Two events out of the total sample space of six. And that simplifies to one third. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the complement of an event. The complement of an event is a set of all outcomes in a sample space that are not included in the event. For example, the event of rolling a three on a number cube in the event of rolling three on a number cube, the complement of rolling any number other than three. The complement is rolling a number other than three, which means the complement is rolling a one, two, four, five, or six. So if you're looking for the event is three, the complement of that is everything that's not three, such as that. An event and its complement. The sum of the probabilities of an event and its complement equals one. So the probability of an event Plus the, comp plus the probability of its complement is always equal to one. So whatever you're looking for plus everything else gives you the entire sample space, which gives you a probability of one. It's certain to happen. You can apply probabilities to situations involving random selections such as drawing a card out of a shuffle deck or pulling a marble out of a closed bag. In example three, there are two red jacks in a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability of not getting a red jack if you select one card at random? Now let me give you a little bit of information about cards. There are four different suits they're called. One suit is called the diamonds. Another suit is called the hearts. So these are the two red suits. There's another one called the spades, a black suit, and another one called the clubs. So two black suits and two red suits. Each suit has um, the same types of cards. There's an a ace. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no one. Hello. The ace often counts as one. And uh, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's a ten of hearts. Uh, there's a jack of hearts, there's a queen of hearts, and a king of hearts. And the diamonds have all of these as well. And there's spades. Spades, there's a two of spades, a three of spades, a five of spades, a jack of spades, queen of spades, and so on. And there's, um, let's see, hearts, uh, diamonds, spades, and clubs. Yeah, we. I, I also need to say that there are clubs. So there's an ace of clubs, this is the seven of clubs, and so on. So, back to this. There's two red jacks in a standard jack of 52 cards. It, okay, and that makes sense because there's a jack of hearts and a jack of diamonds, and those are two, the two red cards. Okay, uh, in, uh, and there's 52 cards in the entire deck. What is the probability of not getting a red jack if you select one card at random? Well, we gotta look at the the probability of the event and the probability of its complement is equal to one. That was mentioned right here. And what we're looking for is getting the probability of a red jack, because that's what they're talking about here, what, uh, of not getting a red jack. So, so let's start with probability of getting a, 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 a red jack is two out of 52. And we're looking at the probability of not getting a red jack. 
and all together is going to be one. So we have, and it's as if we're solving an equation here, we have uh, to isolate probability of not getting a jack by subtracting 2 out of 52 from here. That means that there's the probability of not getting a jack, there's going to be 50 cards there that are not the red jack, if two of them are the red jack. And if I simplify that, 25 out of 26. So the probability that you will not draw a red jack is 25 out of 26. And so it's likely you're not going to select that red jack. That makes sense. And now, we're going to reflect on this. Now. What's the probability of an event? And so now we're going to reflect. What, why do the probability of an event and the probability of its complement add up to 1? Well, the complement is made up of all the outcomes not in the event. When you put the outcomes of an event and its complement together, you get all the possible outcomes of an event. And the probability of getting all the possible outcomes is 1. All right, your, your turn questions. A jar contains eight marbles marked with the numbers 1 through 8. You pick a marble at random. What is the probability of not picking the marble marked with the number 5? Okay, so how many are not marked with the number 5? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 6, and uh, 7, and 8. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them that are not marked with 5, so that's 7 eighths. You roll a standard number cube. You use the probability of rolling an even number to find the probability of rolling an odd number. So the even odd, there you go. I mean, 3, 6 for an even, which simplifies to 1 half. And that's what you got to know about our beginning uh, talks about probability and complements of an event and all of that wonderful vocabulary, including the trial, the outcome, and the experiment. Thanks for watching.